What is up, fisher people? Today we're gonna to be talking about all things bottom bouncer trolling, which in some regards can apply to other kinds of trolling, but specifically, how do you set it all up? How do you get the spread out there? What kind of stuff do you use? How do you run your boat? How do you control your boat to make sure that you're in the best position to catch the most fish possible, not get lines tangled up, and do it right? All the nitty gritty details stuff of doing it right when you're trolling bottom bouncers or potentially crankbaits or anything else for walleyes and i had actually filmed a video again with my little buddy logan the entertainer holy cow look at that guy run i'm thinking this is going to be a decent one eh oh yeah nice fish nice fish First fish of the day, right buddy? Yeah. Nice wally. But we had some issues with the camera, so we didn't get to finish the video, but I'm gonna get creative here and we're gonna intermingle these two things together. So I'm gonna do some talking here in the boat today and then Logan is gonna help show off what we did and catch some fish. Let's hope this comes off well. I think it should be okay. The first thing we can talk about is the rods, the equipment. What do you want to use? I'll get out a couple of these here. So we got one longer rod, one shorter rod. I like to use a longer seven foot rod up in the bow to help people keep the fish from out, or both the line and the fish, out from underneath the bow of the boat. But seven foot rods are probably a good rod in general. For doing this i have six footers on the rest of them i kind of like the sevens though and i'm thinking about getting more sevens for this reason because again helps to keep the fish out from underneath the boat makes it easier to net it but it also helps fighting the fish because the longer the rod is you get a little more bend throughout the rod it's a little more forgiving it helps to keep them pinned and at the same time having more of that medium to slower action helps when if you got a rod in the rod holder it can load up the rod a lot before the fish realizes there's resistance there and it helps to keep fish on, get the hook set, keep the fish pinned when you're fighting it. That said though, the most important thing I think, if you got a group of people out trolling bottom bouncers, you wanna make sure your front weights are heavier than your back weights. So if you imagine your bottom bouncer line's coming down into the water, right? The heavier weight's gonna go more straight down and the lighter weight's gonna tail out further. So it helps to keep a spread between the front and back so that nobody gets tangled up. So a lot of times, if we're fishing shallower water, I like a one ounce up here and a three quarter ounce back here. You've probably heard the like one ounce to 10 foot rule. That's a pretty close approximation, but it's not a hard and fast thing. So even if I'm fishing out to 30 feet of water, a lot of times I got a two ounce here, one and a half in the back. Heavier than two, like you don't get a lot of feel with it and it, it works a lot better. Like if you're running threes and twos, you probably just want rods in the rod holders at that point. You're not gonna feel a lot and you're hoping fish load up the rod, almost set the hook themselves, take it out of the rod holder, give it a little bit of a pull. Um, so I run a lot of twos and one and a halfs when we start to fish 20 to 30 feet of water. If you're fishing more than 30, you probably gotta go to something different, but heavier weights up front. So this line's doing this, this line's doing this, helps to keep it spread down here, keep things from tangling up. The other thing that helps from tangling up is make sure you don't let out too much line. Again, you wanna be able to drop it all the way to the bottom, just be able to touch the bottom, touch the bottom, touch the bottom. Don't drag, touch. You get all that line dragging on the bottom, you're gonna tangle. You're not gonna get very many bites. Your line is gonna be dragging down there. It's not doing its job. After that, in terms of the gear, I like to use a bait casting rod. And the reason I like to use bait casting rods is because it allows you to easily let out line when you're adjusting contours. So if you got that bottom bouncer down there and you're in 20 feet and I'm like, okay, we just dropped off to 25. Click, five feet, done. You don't have all that line spilling out on an open face rod, on a spinning rod. You can control it really easily there. The important thing is to make sure your magnetics are set right so you don't get a lot of bird nesting or you keep that thumb on the spool as it's coming out to regulate it so that it doesn't go out under control, out of control. You want it under control. So I like the bait casters. I like a medium rod. I like a regular to slow action. You can go with a slow action rod even. I don't want a fast action. 
I want it to bend a lot all the way down the rod. This one isn't my best one for that. This one does a little better job because that's what helps you keep that fish pinned and not let them feel that resistance really quick. You got a fast action rod, all the bend is up here. And once they get past here, boom, they feel all that resistance in the backbone. So you want a medium, regular to slow action kind of rod thing. Braid versus mono, that's a bit of a tough call. I'm using braid. I like braid and the reason I do is because you get a lot of good feel with it. First of all, you can feel a lot of stuff. You can feel what's down there. You can feel all the rocks you touch, the weeds you touch. But also, if you got a mono leader with main braid line, if you do get into a snag, most times you're gonna break the leader, not the bottom bouncer. So you don't lose everything. You keep the bottom bouncer with you. The mono is more likely to break. So I got my mono leader, and I'm using pretty short leaders right now, as you can see. The fish lately have been very tight to bottom, very finicky, very sluggish. Those short leaders seem to help a little bit, keeping it down because the spinner as it goes through the water is gonna lift your bait. And if there's too much lift, it's too high above the fish and they're not very aggressive, they might not bite it. So I've been shortening up leaders lately. If you got aggressive fish, four foot leader's good, five foot leader's good. Right now I'm probably running like a, I don't know, what is that? That's barely two, that's not even two feet. And it was just killing them the other day. So that's something to think about. Um, some people might think with finicky fish, longer leader to get away from the bottom monster. I don't think fish in this system, especially are very wary of a bottom monster. I don't think they care. It's more about how high in the water column is the bait. And when they do get finicky, I either go to no hook, sorry, no spinner, or like these butterfly smiley blades and that kind of stuff, instead of the standard thumping Colorado and Indiana blades. It all depends on what the fish are doing. So I usually start every day out with, I get a smile blade out, I get a plain slow death hook, I get a plain regular hook, and I get a green Indiana blade or a silver Indiana blade or a Colorado blade or something, just to have a little diversity out there. See, let the fish tell you what they're gonna take, right? The other thing to note, if you're gonna have braid as your main line, you definitely want to make sure that you put some mono backing line on there. And it can be super light mono, it doesn't have to be strong because it's your backing line. It's gonna be underneath all the braid. Four, six pound test, something like that, so it doesn't take up too much space. But if you just put braid straight to the spool, it's gonna slip a lot. So you go to set the hook and it just slips right out and you don't get any pressure on the fish. You need that mono to get some tackiness on the spool first. Then you connect the mono to the braid with a double uni knot. I got a double uni knot video you can check out. And that will help make sure you don't get that line slippage. If you have mono as your main line, obviously it doesn't matter, just tie the mono on. And then for my leaders, I like to use fairly heavy mono just because there's some big walleyes in Sakakawea. There's also pike in Sakakawea. There's rocks, there's trees, all kinds of stuff. So I use 12 to 14 pound mono. I played with fluorocarbon, but the problem with fluoro is that it sinks more. So it tends to drag through the crap more and you get more snags with fluorocarbon. If it's not very snaggy, if you're fishing sandy bottom and you don't care how high it is in the water column, fluorocarbon could work. I prefer the mono. And I also got a rig tying video. You can check out the rig tying video if you wanna learn how to tie these rigs. I'll slip that in here as well. I've been using a lot of single hooks. I used to use harnesses a lot. I don't do that very much anymore. I prefer the single hook. I prefer a half crawler most days, even for bigger fish. Sometimes bigger crawler, bigger profile gets you bigger fish, but oftentimes it doesn't. Also saves you some bait, saves you some money. So I like single hooks and half crawlers, and I basically just hook that crawler two times close to the front of the hook, thread it on there a little bit the first time, pull it up over the eyelet, and let a little bit hang off the back so that you got a little bit of tail floating in the water, snaking through the water, enticing the bite, so to speak. That's how I like to do my setup. Got my line tangled around the tip of my rod here, which doesn't matter because I'm not fishing, I'm just playing around. So now let's talk a little bit about the bow control aspect of things. So when you're trolling bottom bouncers, speed is a huge deal. You gotta figure out what speed the fish wanna go. I find at Sakakawea a lot of times that happens to be like 0.8 to one mile an hour. I don't go very fast on Sakakawea. I don't necessarily know why that is. Like there's places like Devil's Lake a lot of times, especially in the summer. 
July, August, getting in shallow using heavy bottom bouncers and trolling at one four to one five to six can be really good. It covers a lot of water and it seems to get a lot of bites. I think fast works better for, for shallower water. But on Sakakawi, I find slower is a little better. And there's some days where I'd rather go like a 0 0.6 to 0 0.7. And it just seems like if the fish are off a little bit, it gives them more of a chance to see that bait, think about it, and go and take it. So in order to do that, you know, if it's a flat, calm day, you got total control with your trolling motor, right? If it's not a flat, calm day, you got some wind. Now you got to start thinking a little bit. If you're trying to go into the wind and you can't get enough speed, oftentimes I'll use my kicker motor. And I read this on an article from Mr. Ted Takasaki, and he called it four wheel drive for your boat. So basically you put the kicker in gear to give you most of your speed. And then you turn the bow mount trolling motor on to do your direction. It works great for crankbaits. That's the only way I do crankbait trolling, but it also works for bottom mounts or trolling. If you're going into a pretty stiff wind, to help keep the speed up and you don't want to troll downwind because you're going too fast. So that's a great way to accomplish that, to keep your speed, get a little more power in the back, get your steering up front. Another thing you can do is drift. And a lot of times, like if I'm trolling downwind and there's just a little breeze and I got my troll motor running at a two or a three or something and it's perfect and then the breeze kicks up a little bit, if I'm on a fairly straight shot and the wind's like got me straight downwind, I might just spin that trolling motor around backwards to slow me down a little bit. Kind of acts like a drift sock. If you got a drift sock, great. They can get in the way though. So if you got a good, especially if you're on a flat, you're not trying to hug a tight contour and it doesn't matter exactly how far off to the side you're going. I just spin that trolling motor around to slow the boat down a little bit and keep angling it to make sure the bow is pointing forward. And then I can regulate the speed that way too. Otherwise, if you do have that drift sock in the water, like the other day, my trolling motor broke didn't have a trolling motor. I had a drift sock in and the kicker running. I used the kicker to bounce us in and out or add speed or reduce speed if the wind would fluctuate. And then I had the drift sock there to make sure we weren't going too super fast all the time. So drifting is an option. Various types of trolling is an option. Spinning the trolling motor backwards is an option. Using the kicker as an assist is an option. There's a lot of different things you can do to make that work, to control your boat, to get the right speed and get on the fish because speed does matter. I would say a lot of times if you're looking at somebody else that's catching fish by you and you're not, and it seems like you got the same stuff, you can see that they're using bouncers and crawlers and they got spinners and you got spinners, they're probably going slower or faster. So play with the speed, the speed matters. Now some of the finer things about the boat control, some of the nuances you can use, especially if you got a hummingbird. I know there's other units out there and you might be able to do some of these things with other units. I'm just not familiar with them. But with Humminbird, you got two things specifically that you can use with your Minn Kota, iPilot, all that kind of stuff. If you have the, the iPilot, you can use the autopilot function, which is basically like you set a heading with your remote or on your unit and it'll show a line on your screen or on your trolling motor and it'll keep that heading. So if you don't care so much about weaving a contour and you're just trying to keep a straight line, you can use the autopilot. And then that allows you to just set it, put your remote down, do other things, fish, net fish, tie rigs, whatever you're trying to do, and kind of let the boat keep doing what it's doing. A more advanced feature is the follow the contour feature. So if you have the iPilot link, specifically if you got the stuff linked together, you can follow a contour. You basically go to your Humminbird unit, you scroll over and put the cursor on the contour you wanna follow. You hit the go to button, and then you scroll down to follow contour. And once you arrow over to select that, then it'll ask, it'll show like a yellow line and a blue line going different directions. And you pick which one you want for the direction you wanna go. And then you hit the prop button on the trolling motor and you're off on your way. So then you can just let the boat follow that contour line if there's boats in the way, you might you have to pay attention to the other boats. But if, if there's no boats there or if it's not too crowded, you can do that and just kind of set it and forget it again and follow that contour. If you know fish are in 25 feet and you've got a Lake Master chip that has the contour lines on it, you can follow that 25 foot depth and stay in the fish. Now, the one thing that I've found a little bit when you're dealing with wind is if you're using the autopilot and you pick a heading, 
a lot of times the wind will slowly push your boat off and it kind of auto corrects to the end point that you're trying to reach and your angle slightly changes throughout your pass if the wind's blowing you sideways. If you use the follow the contour feature though, it will hug that contour a lot better than autopilot will, assuming that you have enough thrust on the trolling motor to hold that line. So I think that's a little more accurate and it holds the line better for a longer period of time, but the autopilot is great and you can always you know, adjust and just tweak your line a little bit as you're going with the autopilot thing. I use both of them very frequently when I'm by myself or if I'm guiding, because I want to be able to do other things and I don't want to constantly have to be on the remote. I know like some of the old school guys are like, oh, these kids and their autopilots and blah, yeah, because they used to have a foot pedal and they used to have to constantly be on that thing and adjust it all day long. And at the end of the day, their hips are cramped and all that kind of stuff. The good old days, right? But now we don't have to do that. We don't have to worry about that. So follow the contour a little more accurate in the wind, assuming he has enough thrust. Autopilot, also a great feature. Use them both. Another thing that I like to do too is, you know, fish don't always sit in exactly one contour, especially if you're trying to kind of pin things down, pattern the fish. I like to bounce around a little bit. If I think the fish are in about 20, I might weave back and forth 15 to 25, 15 to 25. And sometimes even coming up or down those brake lines can trigger bites too. So not just pulling through fish, but sometimes the direction matters. Are you coming into the wind, downwind, coming across the break, down the break? If you got current in your system, are you going into the current, down current? Sometimes those things do matter. And I'll notice that we'll make passes back and forth through a school of fish and we'll get three bites going in and one bite going down or vice versa. And it seems to be that way all day long. So then I might just start driving up to the start of the pass and go the same direction every time to kind of maximize our efficiency. Sometimes those weird things matter. So what else can you do? Um, you can use planer boards for trolling bouncers. A lot of people do that like in Green Bay, Lake Erie, that kind of stuff when you're covering really big open water, really big flats. If you're doing suspended open water trolling, you can learn the dive curves of different weights of bottom bouncers at certain speeds to know how far down they go. You can use line counter reels to do that sort of thing. I don't use planer boards, I don't do line counters, I don't do suspended stuff with bottom bouncers, but it's an option, something you can dabble with. I prefer to put rods out front in the bow, rods out the side in the back, and then if I got like two people on this side, I might have one person on the side, one person back behind the motor. Try to do your best to keep them spread out, because the biggest thing that's gonna slow you down from catching fish is snags and tangles. Make sure the line depth's right, you got the right weights of bottom bouncers, and you're keeping people spread out and you're gonna have a great day of fishing just like we did with Logan. So thanks for watching this video. Hopefully it was helpful. Hopefully you learned something. If you did, hit the like button. If you wanna see more videos like this, please subscribe. Thank you so much for the thousand plus subscribers now that have showed me that this is a good thing that I'm doing, that I'm working on and it's helping people and they enjoy it and they get some entertainment, they get some education out of it. If you want to support the channel further than that, you can also become a Patreon supporter. There's three different tiers. You get a certain number of perks depending on what tier you're on. If you'd like to read a book and buy a book and support me with my book, that would be helpful as well. And we also got some merch on the website if you want to buy a t-shirt, a hat, something like that. Otherwise, I just hope you keep watching. Later, Fisher people.